Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Saving money is not particularly an American strong suit. Rather, we're more often labeled as poor savers, living paycheck to paycheck and relying on debt. Long term, the typical US savings rate tends to hover around 7%. Briefly, it did jump over 30% during the pandemic, primarily due to mass shutdowns, which limited spending opportunities and government stimulus checks. But soon after that savings rate started coming right back down. And in the wake of all these headlines telling you that Americans are such poor savers, do you ever wonder how much the typical person is saving? Well, unsurprisingly, there's a study that covered that, and that is the New York Life Wealth Watch survey. So here's how much the typical adult saved last year in 2022, broken down by age. Gen Z, the youngest generation with the oldest members coming in at just 26 years old, saved an average of $5,800. I actually think that is really impressive for such a young age bracket. This generation has really hit the ground running, so to speak, because the average Gen Z member started saving for retirement at just the age of 19. And you can't really ask for better than that. As long as you start saving as early as possible, you're going to make your investing journey that much easier. And that's why this generation is getting a lot of praise for being such strong savers. In fact, these youngsters have the highest savings rate of all generations, coming in at 14%. Not necessarily an easy feat when you consider that they have the lowest wages of all age groups. And the good news is that if they just stick to this savings rate, they will be on track to retire in 44 years, which means someone who started saving at 19 would be on track to retire by the age of 62, all through their own efforts. That's not factoring in any sort of pension or any type of social security. And that's pretty cool. So to these kids, I say, keep it up. And this youngest generation has some pretty lofty financial goals. The typical Gen Z member says they want to increase their savings rate in 2023 with the goal of saving $14,000 in the year. That's incredible. I love a lofty goal or stretch goals as they're often called, because even if you don't hit them, you push yourself into a better place. And if someone did save that $14,000 per year, say they could do that for 10 years straight, say from the age of 25 to 35, that could turn into roughly $230,000. Then that amount simply left invested for another 30 years, that could grow to $2.3 million. Even if they manage that lofty investment for just five years, say from the age of 25 to 30, that would grow to over $100,000. And that amount left invested for another 30 years or until the age of 60 would grow to over a million dollars. Now I'm absolutely not saying that these numbers are easy to achieve. They absolutely are not easy to achieve. But it is the goal that some of these money savvy people at this young age have. So if they are able to achieve that, that's pretty incredible because a large savings rate, a large savings amount at a young age is very powerful. It can set you up for a lifetime of financial success and it can really get you started on the path of Coast Fire. Next up, we have the millennials, those age 27 to 42. And the typical millennial saved just over $6,000 in 2022. Now, believe it or not, that is actually the highest dollar amount average for all age groups. So kudos to this group for having the highest dollar amount saved, but it doesn't seem like it was that much of a jump from the previous generation, considering that the people in this age group are now a decade or two older than that previous generation, and they should be much further along in their careers. Now, it's worth noting that for many, this really is the time for the messy middle of life. So while these workers are older and they probably are earning more than that previous generation, they're probably juggling more of life's complexities. Like they probably have a mortgage and maybe a young family. Perhaps they even still carry student loan debt. So all of these factors could absolutely help to explain a lower savings rate, even with a higher salary. And that can help to explain a lower than expected dollar amount here. Then we come to Gen X, those aged 43 to 58. Median amount saved was just under $4,000. If this number seems low, it's absolutely because it is. And such a low savings rate at this age is kind of concerning because these are your years leading right up to retirement. And it makes you start to wonder, 
If people can't save now, when will they be able to save? And it's this type of savings rate that is leaving many Americans feeling like they're ill-prepared and not on track to comfortably pay for retirement. But this generation does have some unique challenges. While they should be in their peak earning years career-wise, and immediately that might make you think, well, they should have the highest savings rate then and the highest savings dollar amount, but the thing to note is that Gen X actually has the largest debt burden of people of all ages, including the highest credit card balance of any generation, then likely still having a mortgage, perhaps their own student debt burden while simultaneously trying to help their kids with their college expenses. And all of this translates into a hefty burden for everyday expenses that can have a way of bumping retirement savings and investing to the back burner. The other thing to really note is that while life can throw you a curveball at absolutely any time, a lot of people say this is the time when it happens. Like maybe it's an unexpected medical event for yourself or a loved one or maybe you have to reduce hours or step away from the workforce completely to care for aging parents, which is how people in this age group get dubbed the sandwich generation as they're taking care of their own kids as well as their parents. Gen X does have the goal to increase their savings this year with the hopes of saving over $6,000 in 2023. Finally, we have the baby boomers. Those aged 59 to 77 report a median savings of almost $4,500 for 2022. In a way, it's hard to get a true stat on this generation because many baby boomers have already retired and stepped away from the workforce. And if you've successfully retired, you don't need to be saving anything anymore. You're not in the wealth accumulation phase, you're in the decumulation phase and withdrawing from your accounts. In the same way, it's hard to get a true stat on the youngest generation, Gen Z, because the youngest member of that generation is currently 11 years old and they haven't even entered the workforce. In spite of what seems to be a lower savings amount, baby boomers as a whole reported feeling more financially secure than any other generation. And I think this really comes down to such a large percentage of the baby boomer population has already retired and perhaps they're relying on a pension or they're drawing social security. So it comes down to the fact that they're at a different phase of life right now. Savings isn't the main goal. It's worth mentioning that across all age groups, women reported feeling greater stress, more off track with their savings goals, and less hope when it came to their finances than men. And largely, this comes down to savings, or perhaps the ability to save. When you look at all age groups, the median savings for women was just over $3,000, compared to $7,000 for men. And this is why women are far less likely to be prepared for retirement than men. Now there's a number of different reasons why women on average save less than men. It could be wages, it could be career choice, it could be that women are more likely to take time off the workforce, sometimes months or even years in order to take care of kids or other family members. All of these impact your income and thus your ability to save. All of these are also beyond the scope of this video, but by and large, women do on average save less than men. Now, how much should you be saving? Well, the general rule of thumb is that you should be saving about 20% of your income. And if you wanna break that down further, it's 15% towards long-term goals like retirement and 5% towards short-term goals. And this is a fine rule of thumb as it does keep you increasing your savings amount as your income increases which is always a good thing. And the whole heart of this saving 15% is based on a traditional working career or doing it for 40 years. And if you follow this saving 15% for 40 years, you should be able to retire and maintain your same standard of living, assuming you do a conservative withdrawal rate, something like a 4%. Fidelity recommends having one times your salary saved up and invested by the time you're 30, three times by the age of 40, six times by the age of 50, working your way up to 10 times your income by the time you're 67. However, perhaps you're looking to answer this question in a more personalized way. Rather than relying on just a general rule of thumb, you want to know how much you should be saving for your specific goals. Well, first you need to define what your goals actually are. Is it a specific net worth or is it an income that you hope your investments are able to provide you on an annual basis? I often think it's most appropriate to start with the annual income 
income you want in retirement because from there you can actually figure out the lump sum you would need to provide that. You're also going to need to consider your current age and the age you want to retire. Let's say that you and your spouse are each 35 years old. Your goal is to have a retirement income of $100,000 when you retire in 30 years at the age of 65. And let's say you currently have $35,000 invested, as that is the average investment of a typical 35-year-old according to the most recent Federal Reserve data. And let's say that your current household income is $125,000. Then you're going to want to ask yourself, are there any other sources of income that you're going to be receiving in retirement? Do you have any rental properties? Is there a pension to consider? Do you want to factor in some level of Social Security? Honestly, nailing down these figures is the hardest part, because once you have these figures figured out, you can ask yourself, how much do I need to save to hit that goal? But that's the easy one because you can take all of those figures and simply enter them into an online retirement calculator. There's plenty of them out there. I will link a couple down below. I really like the one from Charles Schwab, but Bankrate has a great one too. They both allow you to play with different factors like social security, rates of return, different ages for retirement, and more. It's always good to personalize your numbers. That way you know that you're actually working towards your specific goals. It's certainly better than saying, I guess I'll just save this random amount and hopefully I'll be fine and get to my goals. I like to drive towards financial freedom with a little more intention than that. So let me know, what was your savings rate in 2022 and are you aiming to increase that this year? Leave your answer in a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye.